So um, it's great to see everyone. Welcome to this meeting. Now, we just briefly started, and as Paolo told you, we'll be recording this meeting, so we'll have it available uh, later. And as you know, for, for the best quality, is good if we keep our mics on mute while we're not speaking. Um, so we'll have our usual one and a half hour session today. Um, we will start with 30 minutes presentation by uh, Jörn. Then we will have approximately a 50 minute debate and we'll end with about a 10 minute energy work. Now, for those who don't know me, my name is Evelyn Malzani. Um, I'm an Italian and uh, I was born in Stockholm where I live and, and I work as a communications trainer here. Uh, I've been involved with conscientiology for the past 10 years and currently I am volunteering for Reprendencia. So um, the topic today, the topic we're, we're discussing and we're going to hear about today is interplanetary assistance. Uh, we will take a look at, uh, among other things, our world and the development in it, uh, reurbanization and extraterrestrial consciousnesses. And I'm very happy to introduce our speaker today, uh, Jörn Schmidt. Now, I, I met Jörn uh, seven years ago, I think, in Portugal. And, and I had the pleasure of interacting with you for uh, on several occasions in FOS. Um, you have been involved in conscientiological self-research since 2006, and you're currently volunteering for Ectolab, SAIC, and ISIC. And you've also participated at the College of Extraterrestriology. So I'm very much look forward to hear what you have to say today and, uh, and uh, your presentation. So please, Jarn, take it away. Thank you. Um, very welcome to the presentation. But before I start, let's say uh, a few words about the College of Extraterrestriology. Because we had uh, this college and we had one pre-IC, so-called uh, Exercons, and uh, we had a pause of making research in that area of extraterrestriology. And we had some uh, synchronicities uh, in January this year that four people of us had the same idea during two weeks. And the idea was to restart the research of, uh, of extraterrestriology. And when we met first, um, Helena uh, Santana, he, she was um, reorganizing the college itself. And when we met, we find out that many people who has not so much experience in research of that area, they were thinking of extraterrestriology like a uh, Hollywood way, where they have films in their mind or aliens with war or something like that. But um, for us, it was not like this. It was very familiar. When we talk about extraterrestriology, it was, well, it's familiar. It's part of our game. It's part of our life. So um, I think it is important to give a contrapoint to that uh, mainstream of thinking of aliens, what people have or what we find on the internet. And this is why I choose today the uh, item of interplanetary assistance. So the principle of disbelief, uh, certainly all of you know, uh, in this case is very important because we restarted a research and what I present today was the first hypothesis we had in this group and it's the very start of our research. Uh, so let's see and I'm very happy and looking forward to our debate to have a good uh, change in the exchange of our ideas. Uh, the presentation topics are vision of our world as an experiment of an evolutionary laboratory. I will give a little understanding about RioVex, reorganization, the extra physical reorganization. Of course, all of you know of her, had heard of it, of it, but the new aspect of the second part of the task is the reurban, what is the integration of the reorganized uh, consciousness into the interphysical societies. I will uh, talk a little more about this. So uh, just in the beginning, we have the reorganization. And when we have this concierge coming to be resumated in the interphysical world, the level, the evolutionary level uh, is very uh, low. And how to integrate these people in our societies is one task, uh, which is very important, I think. 
And third, it is a hypothesis of the regarding the extraphysical consciousness working as interplanetary helpers who are resumated here in uh, Earth. So let's start and very welcome to Earth. Planet Earth is the best laboratory in galaxy. Uh, of course, all of you, all of us, we were before aliens. So we are coming here to Earth to have an experiment. No one can say I'm uh, out of the game. I'm, I have nothing to do with aliens or extraterrestriology uh, because all we are doing in experiments and before we came here, we were um, ETs, but uh, don't believe and experiment. And this is exactly what we uh, do here on Earth. So how does the experiment work? When you see uh, the Earth as a laboratory, uh, how does it work since the beginning until now? Is it developing successfully? How can we prove this? Let's uh, have some dates. Let's have some information. The Earth was formed more or less four and a half billion years ago, a long time ago. And uh, when people started consciousness coming to this experiment, they certainly do not start an evolution as in Homo sapiens. They the evolution start with virus. So uh, when we see now four and a half billion years and the first human uh, species was coming up was 200,000 uh, years ago, it's just a short time. And in this short time, when we have the consciousness here uh, as a human being also, we can see that we have a, a, um, a visible process of evolutionary. So it's our evolution is going upwards. We, we can see we have an interacting which is a little more peaceful. We do not have such uh, um, wars, for example, on this world. But uh, when, we, we, when we see much deeper and we make a research, then we can say it is a pathological Holocene. And not uh, even after the Second World War, we had the possibility and the potential to destroy the experiment itself. Not only the human race, what we had just before, the Romans had the possibility uh, yet to, to kill everyone and to destroy the human species. Now, now we can destroy our experiment ourselves. So when we think about a laboratory experiment, well, we have a potential which is very high risk. Uh, where we are standing today, and when I said we have the evolution and the evolution is visible going upwards, it's never static. It's never going like this. It always has uh, uh, waves. And one of these effects we have today when we say where we're standing now with our uh, experiment is globalization of population. Uh, let's see, uh, when I go to history and the migration phases in history, how does it work? The first human space, they have to go out of the location where they are born because of hunger, because of uh, temperature, it's going freezing or something like that. Later, it was more than they have battles each to another. So they have territories and uh, they are going out there. And today, what do we have today? Today, we have an economic refugees. So people are going out of their country because of an income, because they have better possibilities to live outside. The first map we have here on the right side is a map for mass migrations since 1990. So the last 25 years or 27 years. And you can see there, uh, which is red, this is more the immigrations or migrations which are inside one continent. So here in uh, Africa, for example, you can see we have uh, civil wars, for example, and then we have the migration from one country to the, uh, to the neighboring country. So it, and after war, they can go backwards. So it's more inside. It's not going outside. It's not like this exchange. It's another level of migration. Um, it, the same is more or less in Middle America and in India. Uh, then we have some countries which are more or less and everything which is here more green or yellow. This is a, a big interaction. So we have here some focus. This is Europe, this is the US, this is Japan and this is uh, Australia. There the people go, the migration uh, where they want to go is more to these places because it seems to be easier to live there. And this is an uh, idea of economy. 
my hypothesis is that uh, globalization, of course, affects all today. So this has a good hand and a bad hand. The good is we have communication, we have possibilities, we have uh, the possibility to learn, for example, education. But on the other hand, everything is influenced all over the world. So when we have an influence, that influence of power, political power, when uh, someone has the possibility of atomic bomb or something like that, everyone has an effect of it. So this is the other hand. And another hypothesis I have is about population. Here on the uh, right side, uh, you can see that the population is going very fast up. In 1970, we have 3.68 billion uh, people on this planet, into interphysically, uh, just uh, to, to make it clear, uh, just count the interphysical conscience. And in 2015, we have doubled it. And today we have close to 8 billion uh, intraphysical uh, people here living on this planet Earth. Why this? And I think one part of this is the reorganization side. So when we have had many wars before and the people were dying uh, and they get into the war because they do not have a good potential of uh, evolutionary level, uh, then they were in the baratrospheres. And from the baratrospheres coming uh, the resumated uh, comes health here, this is a low level. So when we have now double uh, in in the last few years, then the whole level of our world is going bad. So how can we handle this? And uh, let's let's see a little deeper this effect. I have here a balance right, to see we have more cons health on the one hand, and uh, uh, Valdo Vieira, he said in one of the mini tertulias that it will getting worse until 2075. Well, long time. So uh, if it's true or not, uh, just to have an, uh, an idea where we are standing here with our world. And he also said that we have, on the other hand, Homo sapiens serenissimus, who are interphysical working here in this experiment, 65. Uh, so this is uh, something where we can see, oh, we have now more Homo sapiens serenissimus. This will have an effect. But on the other hand, the population is very, very uh, important to say a bad effect. Where are we today? Let's figure out just one item, a political situation. Uh, I think these guys you all know. <laughs> so uh, these are powerful people. Uh, what is the level of these people? My hypothesis is that every country, uh, every Holocene of uh, a region has its leader like a, a mirror of the evolutionary intraphysical new level that this country has. So this is more or less where we are standing. Now I come to the, uh, to the task of in re -urbing. Just to uh, remember, integration of reorganized consciousness into intraphysical societies. And this is becoming much more complex. Uh, imagine uh, more people coming here. We have this globalization processes. And how does it uh, work? What effects are? This is when I say effects, I was talking also about group karmic work. So when we had group karmic work before, it was local. So when a family in a, in a village has something uh, to do in the prison of, uh, uh, and uh, that stuff, they had group karmic in the prison work with more local sites. Today, it's coming up into intercontinental. So it's exploding. We do not have a, a group processes, which are local, we have group processes which are interfering one and each other. Let's make an example. Uh, let's choose an example of British Empire. When we have some people in British Empire, uh, they were going to India uh, and the people there are dying. Uh, probably after some time they will resume in India. Maybe different, but it's, I, I think statistically most of them will be there. This is group karmic very good because then they can change the site. Right? Before they were white, now they have changed the color. They have changed the culture. They have changed the religion. And then, but then they have the desire to go backwards to their origin. Huh? So then when we talk about migrations today, it's uh, for me more an image that the uh, that our family from, from, let's make another example, from Germany, who were in the Second World War in Africa, uh, uh, they were coming now back 
it's our brothers, our sisters coming back. Huh? So um, the inter-influence is also a confrontation in this uh, um, uh, uh, idea. The confrontation is that we have the religion, the culture, um, and this makes uh, a, a trouble into the society now. So the, the uh, risk that I see is that we have a division of one part wants to hold the old system, a local one, and the other part uh, accepts the uh, evolution. How does it work? What does uh, Baldo said to this is very interesting. He has written in the Homo sapiens reorganizatus, reorganizatus, a chapter Europe for extraterrestrials. This collective and grandiose assistance work has raised unimaginable proportional uh, being advised even by teams of extra-physical, extraterrestrial consciousness that is alien or advanced technicians for, or from other planets specialized in parapathologies of psycho and uh, psychosoma and multifaceted structures according to genetic development of each planet through the intensification, intensification of the continental interplanetary extraphysical transmigration. Oh, interesting. So when we see now our experiment and we can say, haha, here's an experiment, it's going down or the risk is very high that it can be, can be destroyed by itself. There are some groups coming from external. So this is alienated uh, groups, which are specialized for similar situations. Uh, maybe another experiment which is on evolutionary thoughts also, and these groups coming down to Earth. Transmigration, of course, is the best, has the best effect of an experiment because you are in the experiment, and when you participate, the experiment itself, the influence is much higher. But what other possibilities are to go in contact with interplanetary helpers? We will have on one hand the intraphysical side, on the extraphysical side is the other hand. Let's start with the intraphysical. So this is our encounters of the third kind. Everyone knows what it is. Uh, the second uh, is, for example, uh, the intraphysical uh, with symbols. Uh, we had in, in, in some times in, in, in history, we remember, oh, in, in uh, Egypt, for example. In Egypt, we had some uh, 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 symbols which the Egypts use, which have maybe hints from extraterrestrial side or the crop cycles, just to mention two um, examples. Other hand, the extraphysical side, what do you know from the extraphysical side? Have you had lucid projections, exoprojections? Have you encountered with intraphysical helpers? Huh? Interesting question. Uh, Pre-mother, this concept is something when, uh, for example, EM was working together with Baldo. So when in the adaptation phase, when the uh, extraterrestrial consciousness will come here, they have a pre-mother, a consciousness with experience on this in this experiment, and they help each other. Other thing, in the intermissive course, we have para visits, uh, which are more, uh, which uh, are uh, going to more advanced. Uh, extra physical communities. So, who remembers uh, of you uh, guys which have an intermissive course? Do you remember to be there into a group of interacting, intercambio with other planets? Very interesting. And here at the dynamics, uh, the interexistential dynamics, uh, at the last two years, we find out or we perceive that we have more contact also with extraterrestrial beings. Here are some, uh, just to remember, uh, of this interplanetary helpers and the symbols. Huh? On the left side, we have this Egypt, uh, and the signs here, you can see a helicopter, or uh, it's an UFO on the right side there on the side, uh, or maybe a, an airplane. Huh? And uh, here in France, we had uh, imagination. This is, for me, it is an UFO. Huh? So um, they painted it, and they had some ideas. I don't know if it was extra physically or inter physically, but uh, it is a contact, I think. Uh, the crop uh, circles, very interesting. Can it be that they are hints to overcome our problems of energy? Here, for example, is one design, and uh, uh, Technicum in Italy, he used it to make a new magnetic motor. 
to produce very easy uh, uh, electricity. And it, it functions, the effectivity of this motor was very high. So could it be that the uh, interplanetary help has got, give us hints to overcome some problems here that we can develop mass much faster? This is a question. Other questions we make in research of invisible college of extraterrestrial was about Martha Socine. So what was a Martha Socine we can feel? And what we figured out, what we perceived is that we have a strong Martha Socine of convivology. So how do we interact together in groups, very connected to groups? And we felt that uh, very often uh, when we talk about uh, uh, that stuff, uh, we came to processes which are intergroupal. So one group, another group coming together and they have uh, some correlation. The other is paradiplomacy. So this could be a very strong trait of uh, the uh, extraterrestriology or the people coming here, the interphysical helpers. Another thing is when we worked uh, with energies, we felt a strong connection with the extraterrestrial central of mega fraternity. And this is very, it was very strong. It was like, wow, um, so cool. Uh, it was uh, 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 very forced. And uh, could it be that, or can it be that the extra physical energetic center of maker affinity is the area of connection? This is what I ask myself. So the connection that we can go there in, uh, for example, the intermissive course to have some experience with it. And the extraterrestrial who do not transmigrate it here, they have a problem here because we are a pathologic holosocene. It's not good to come here directly. They could be destroyed or uh, ill. Uh, so better to connect, for example, in this area, which is very clear and very strong. It is a question. Uh, the last part, I want to show you some ideas about phases of these interplanetary helpers. First phase certainly will be the transmigration itself. So when we or when the helper comes uh, into that experiment. Second will be an adaptation. Right? So you have to adapt to take part of this uh, experiment. Then the qualification phase, because you have a task, you have a mission here. We came here or the, the uh, help us come here to, uh, to help in this experiment, not to destroy itself. Uh, so we have to qualificate or requalificate ourselves here at the, um, uh, uh, at the Earth. And the last phase, of course, will be the assistance itself. Let's go a little deeper. Phase of transmigration. Uh, when do the uh, alien come best for, uh, to Earth? So when we say transmigration, we can say we start the experiment from the beginning. So uh, the consciousness uses a virus or a planets for a plants for uh, start the experiment, or a consciousness starts as a human being, as Homo sapiens, so and so. I think it's my opinion that uh, it is more effectful when the very um, uh, advanced helpers starts not from the beginning, so as Homo sapiens, and then let's see. Uh, I, I don't think that they will start at Homo sapiens, um, as sapiens, but uh, one level. Huh? And when is the best time to come here to transmigrate on this earth? Uh, the question is also, when is it, when it could be successful. So it depends very of the uh, evolutionary phases in this experiment has. When we have a, a world crisis, for example, and everyone is going aggressive and it's started to be uh, very strange, more pathologics coming. Uh, then, of course, it will not be very good to transmigrate because you have your problem, your personal problem with adaptation, uh, and you will have a second problem that the society is not open for help. So when the society is not open for help, the crisis becomes not good. This is why I think uh, also um, that uh, these uh, symbols coming from external uh, come always when a culture is open. Uh, or when a society is open, open-minded for new ideas, that evolutionary uh, acceleration is possible. So this is, I think, the best possibility for uh, transmigration. The other, this is also a method 
question of methodology and the consciousness openness. The other point I want to show you is the organization of teamwork. Um, I think uh, it, it's not so good when only one consciousness is coming down to help. Uh, it could be uh, have problems or I don't know what, only one is very, very less. So um, I think it will be groups coming here. So we have from one planet, this is one planet, we have one group coming here, specialized here, they're coming in Egypt. Then we have maybe another planet, and then on that planet, um, they have another specification, another specialized team coming to a different time, or at the same time, or a different place. So I, what I think is that in uh, certain times, uh, in, in, in that uh, experiment, they are coming groups, mostly when we have a high culture or a culture with openness. And these groups here are working uh, and uh, then and in one time they will activate themselves because first they have this um, uh, adaptation phase, uh, phase which everyone, each of uh, these uh, is part participant of this group must have. Uh, so let's see. Then the adaptation phase. This is uh, what Waldo has made uh, with Prima with DEM. Um, this is very interesting for me. How was the situation before? Maybe before the transmigration, uh, I was an alien four meters uh, higher, and I was in a situation of a dimension which was very acid or very sour. I don't know. We do not have uh, uh, lungs to, to breathe, or I don't know, maybe in water, a liquid. And how is it to, to change this, to, to have the, this uh, new soma? Uh, so the adaptation of the physical soma could be very um, strange. I felt that some of these uh, people have the problem of uh, visual, for example, when, when you're before in water or in, in, in the chemical substance. Uh, you have another uh, 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 perception. Uh, you perceive uh, your environment different. Uh? The other thing is the question of consciousness. Maybe we had some uh, a consciousness um, which were living before to, together in their societies. Could be. I had an exo projection when I uh, encountered some aliens. It was very far from here, and I was uh, into a space. And then it was something a transparent liquid or something like that. What it was, uh, consciousness inside. I felt, and not only one, but I could not see, I could not perceive. It was just one mass. And then they separated and shaped itself. And then I could find out, ah, these are here two shapes. And I, I asked them, what are you doing? Are you before together? And then uh, you go individual? Do you need not to be individual to have your experience? And they said, we can have both here. We can have our experience and we share it together in this mass. We do not need to have contact uh, uh, individual and talk about things. So how do they live together? Wow, this is very advanced. Imagine when you have one bad thought only. Uh, everyone knows this. So uh, you will not think badly because the, the feedback is very, very fast. And I think this is a very interesting uh, um, interacting in this group when everyone is together in this mess. Uh, also, when you think of ortho so seen, this has, a, uh, I think, a good trainment there uh, when you are together into a, a mass of consciousness. Uh, very interesting. So how to adapt this or other aspect? Uh, they have only two uh, uh, possibilities to manifestate themselves. How, how do they uh, uh, work with now four vehicles? Uh, soma, psychosoma, energosoma, and mental soma. Very strange, maybe. Uh, so the adaptation could be very strange for that uh, for people coming here uh, into that experience. Qualification uh, phase. Here we have. Um, that the, the people are now in the experiment. They are uh, in that laboratory acting. They are interacting. Okay. Uh, but the problem is that they lose their lucidity about their mission, why they come here to Earth. They have to remember it. 
And the problem of our evolution here, of this experiments, is that we have so many problems in evolution itself. So we will not only karmical stuff, ego karma, group karma stuff, uh, we have um, also things of day-to-day -day life. So it could be that this evolutionary task, what I uh, call here plan B, overrides the plan A, the mission why they are here. Uh, they have to overcome this. It's not easy, of course not. And another problematic is ego versus consciousness. I said when this example of consciousness living together in, in uh, one liquid, huh? So when they come now and have a strong trait, for example, of conviviology uh, or par uh, uh, diplomacy, and they come to Earth and they were confrontated on this pathological uh, uh, experiment here, can be that they have problems to be individual, how to act as an ego, that they overcome the problems of ego long, long time ago, and they are very good in, in leadership. But on this hand, it changes. This is my hypothesis, that they have a weak, mega weak trait of leadership. Why this? This is psycho psychology uh, uh, um, way of thinking, I think, can be, uh, I have one problem to adapt myself here, but I have a strong trait. I felt that I'm a good leader. Then I will be a leader. And I to, to be more accepted, on in this world here, I will connect this uh, um, leaderships like they do it here. And then it's going worse because it will be that this one is a very good leader or strong leader, but it will show up like a mega weak trait. And this to overcome is not easy. But I think we will have over uh, that other uh, syndromes like the foreigner syndrome. Uh, you can imagine one small group of, let's say, 10,000 uh, consciousness, or let's say 1,000, or maybe 12. Uh, when, when this small group is coming here, uh, they will feel like a, a, a foreigner a long, long time. I think they suffer all of this syndrome. Overcoming the foreigner syndrome is not easy. And when we have the debates in, in the College of uh, Extraterrestrology, we can find out that each of us had uh, suffered a lot of this foreigner sort of syndrome. This is why I mentioned it. Um, and the other is that we have the integration of the evolutionary groups. So we have one, the, the group itself from the extraterrestrial helper coming here. And now over the seriexes of lives, they have the evolutionary group. And these two have to fit together. This is also not easy because uh, it is a different way of working together, a, a different process also. The last phase we have is a phase of assistance. And uh, as I said, we have um, from one side the individual processes uh, that every one of them have, and on the other side, the group process. This group process of evolutionary group or of the groups of extraterrestrial groups of spe specialized people coming together. And in the end, when it's necessary to have an effect of the experiment itself, we will have team work. So people, this is the end of my presentation. I think it's a lot of stuff. It's just the first ideas we had um, and I'm now looking forward for our debate. Here I have some bibliography of it and uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Jörn. That was a lot of information in a short time. Um, <laughs> so it's, um, let's let's start the, the debate. Um, I would like to ask, are there any particular questions that you would like to, to start with? Anyone? Have I have one question. May I? May I? Okay, uh, Jorn, uh, considering the hypothesis that extraterrestrial consciousness are resumated here in Earth to help in the Hellbex process, as you mentioned, what kind of abilities or skills uh, do you think they have that might help her 
uh, better this process? Uh, or in what position is in society they could be present? What is your opinion about this? Uh, yes, I, what I think is uh, the complexity of our evolution is an, at a point where it is uh, overloaded for the most people. So when we are in the evolution, before it was one step to another step. And when we have now helpers here, uh, these helpers have to be very clever, very intelligent. They need to have the possibility to, uh, to handle with this complexity. And I think uh, the helpers coming here to the societies, they can um, uh, bring down the energies when the people do not handle this complexity anymore. Uh, let's make an example. We have political uh, situation here that, for example, everyone is uh, going in a debate of radicalism. Uh, you have the traditional side, they want to go backwards. Uh, you have the others, they want to go to pure democracy. And now it's like a fight one to another. They do not see that the complexity is so much open that we talk here about cultures, that we talk here about religion, that we need helpers to clarify that it's not needed to have so much energy uh, um, to put in that debate. And I think this is one where we can discover this is uh, an, an interplanetary helper when he can handle without being psychosomatic uh, uh, in, influenced. Thank you. Um, hello, Jan. Thank you for your great presentation. It was very interesting. Um, one question, uh, if you were talking about that if extraterrestrial, extraphysical helpers are being resumated on Earth, um, and if, I mean, okay, we have a role in this, you know, to, to assist them to adapt as well, or to assist them to assist, you know. So what is your opinion about, or advice, or thoughts about how can we assist them in that adaptation process? What can we do yeah, in within technology, but also outside? You know. Yeah. Uh, let's let's make an example. What we do here in uh, Cognopolis, for example, because what uh, I think is we best uh, we start with ourselves. So when we talk about how can we help them uh, in the world, then it's good to see how uh, can we. Uh, work here to our neighbors. Uh, how are we going uh, to, to live in our community? And Cognopolis, it's also like an experiment. So it's uh, good to, to talk about this because it's uh, small and you can see the effects very, very clear or uh, they are short ways. And when I see here, how do we interact one by another? Respect. Uh, how uh, uh, opinion, uh, when different opinion, do I listen to him? Can I listen to the other one? Uh, and that uh, this is how we can help the extraterrestrial helpers, the interplanetary helpers, because uh, it's not easy to explain. Imagine there is someone who is super intelligent and he has good ideas and he knows this. How can he have a voice? in a society. When, just imagine, uh, Melanie, you are now a helper and you know what to do. For example, this symbol of uh, that machine who can help us in energy. How can you present your idea? Can you present it directly? Are we able in our society to be open, open-minded for it? I think we have now the symbols before and not a directly uh, contact because the most, uh, um, the most societies are ill. And when I see that uh, I have an example here in, uh, in, in Cognopolis, um, I can imagine uh, how um, uh, complicated it is to have a voice. Uh, we had the dynamic of parasurgery 
And in this dynamic, I was uh, the one uh, at, in one moment to have the, a complementation with the, with the consciousness coming to be uh, to having parasurgeries. And I perceived an, an extraterrestrial being, a very tall one, and I perceived it as a helper. I perceived that uh, this guy is doing something with my para brain. And interesting that three other people in the same session uh, saw also extraterrestrials. And I was asking uh, what we are doing here. And what the, uh, the answer was, was very interesting. Uh, it was, we are observing your work. It is very interesting that into a very pathologic society exists one work that you are going in a dynamic for inter-assistance and you work here in, on parasurgery with other beings. This was very interesting for me. I never was thinking about maybe we are blind for it or we do not let them work because it's pathologic for them too. After a while, I can perceive that the first helpers, extraterrestrial helpers coming with some para um, surgery mechanism. So they had, for example, to make para surgery on the para brain. And they said there's something metallic or like a metal here. And then I can feel how does the energy goes to the para brain. And this was some, some technique. I, I think it, it was coming from outside. We do not develop this here. And I, feel, I can see that these um, uh, interplanetary helpers, they are not transmigrated. They were coming from external to help us. Maybe it is that they were helping their brothers, they, the transmigrated ones, uh, or to help uh, groups who have a, a level, an evolutionary level of interacting, of convivology, uh, of conviviology um, and uh, practice this, that they will spend some investigation in us. And interesting, after some years or one and a half year, I can perceive the first extraterrestrial being coming here, extraterrestrial uh, um, uh, clients to have a parasurgery in our session. So I think this is um, uh, an idea how we can help this process. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's not easy to understand this concept. I know that. <laughs> uh, yeah, my brain is spinning. I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm curious to hear if, if anyone has had any experience with extraterrestrials and if you would like to share that experience. Yes, uh, here in the dynamics or psychic dynamics in forces is pretty common to to see to perceive some extra physical consciousness and through the clairvoyance phenomenon i i consider that i saw some of them or uh, felt the thing and also the, the the different characteristics the interphysical characteristics of of their them and it's it's very interesting and uh, this is what i i remember off the top of my head now and how does i mean does the whole also scene did you perceive it does it differ very much very much it's an extraterrestrial or... sorry can you repeat i, I i've closed the, the... scene I'm, I'm curious to hear if you perceive it that is it differs does the whole other scene when when you're in contact with an extraterrestrial differ very much? No. Well, please go ahead. <laughs> I think it's it's a, a very it's like here you have different uh, types of uh, of extraterrestrial beings. So uh, the evolutionary level they have is very different too. 
And uh, the whole so scene sometimes is like in a buried troposphere. I did not see a difference, uh, only that they are acting a little strange. Uh, and when we had this uh, whole so scene, uh, when the helpers working together in the dynamics, then of course uh, I can discover or I have discovered that the whole so scene is different. And uh, this is also why I said that my hypothesis is that the uh, extra physical center of mega fraternity has a, a strong connection with it. It is very, very uh, um, soft energies coming and uh, they, they do not make any pressure. Uh, it's, it's very good. Like I, when, when, when you talk about helpers, uh, and you have an imagination of how it can be in whole uh, I, I felt this in, in, the, in the dynamic when these helpers are working with us. Okay, but, we uh, have a question oh. here. We have a question here from Thais, but I, just before I ask that one, I would like to clarify one thing. So are we saying that extraterrestrials are always more evolved? Is that what <laughs> we're saying here? No, I, I remember here in, in Fos de Iguazu, I had a lucid projection and uh, I felt that I was uh, moving my words and my psychosoma was, uh, was uh, up, uh, going up. And uh, when I start seeing something, uh, I felt that there were three consciousness uh, in front of the bed. And one was a little child and this little child had something, wow, it was a vampire. And uh, when I was lucid and when, when I was going totally out of the body, then he jumped on my psychosoma and sucked here the energy on my neck on, on that side. It was not on the nuclear, it was more on the side. And I felt that my lucidity was going down. And the other two uh, were more like parents of, of uh, this concierge. And, uh, I felt that my lucidity was going down and I remember just try to make a vibrational state or something like that. And I was surprised. I start just thinking about it and then I felt the vibration and this uh, little concierge child was popping up. And so it was disconnected from myself and then it was uh, like a, a wow, it doesn't, it doesn't get what uh, it wants. Huh? And then I, I, the lucidity come back and I start to have more energies and then it ran away. So when it ran away, I was looking to it and I was seeing there were three other conscious, consciousness uh, in the neighbor room. And then one of them come in and this were it, uh, ITs, uh, this were aliens. Um, and the one was coming was like a friend for me, interesting. What I felt, the other two, they were from the same group. The other two were, have a little respect to coming in because they saw what happened when, when I start uh, my energy work. So the one who was more friendly come to myself and I had some ideas, intuitive ideas that we worked together. And then I had some imagines of um, human beings making some experiments with uh, a, uh, aliens. This was awful. They caught them uh, and they were taking things of the, the uh, consciousness. Uh, they make obverse, uh, uh, it was terrible. Right? It was terrible and I, I felt very bad that the human race had some uh, spaces that they have the first context uh, intraphysically context was not an extra physical it was intraphysically and they cut them um, and, and make experiments with them they hurt it was a torture and this was for me very very sad but i felt that on the other hand uh, this group of uh, the three uh, extraterrestrial beings they have made the same with uh, with the human uh, human species so I had the information that on the other side, they're making the same. There was a, 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 a spaceship coming down to Earth, uh, some human being going with them, and then they made the same things with them. So it was in a, a very low level. And I think this group do not have this, this high level. But interesting was 
that there was another uh, group of extraterrestrials with a higher level and they stopped this interacting and after that they made an inter an intercambio with ETs and human beings. And this uh, friend, I discovered as a friend, was one of this interacting, uh, it's like this interplanetary visits, I thought in the uh, intermissive course. And I remember that I was together with this guy in this interacting and learning process each from, an, from another. Interesting, because the group was now in process. He was one of the first. He, he has the courage to talk with me directly in a, or interphysically, uh, in an extraphysical dimension, but directly. And the two others, they were more by sight. They, they, they have fear huh, of, of what we are doing there. So uh, I think it's not only a, a process of um, uh, evolution on our side, and on, uh, it is also on the other side. And we have helpers, and we have, I think, uh, collaborating um, experiments on other planets and have interacting too. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, we can say, uh, we've established then that just as with humans, there is different levels of evolution. And um, Thais had a question about this, but he said that you answered it. But his question was, so if the ETs are more evolved, then why would they be resumated and lose their lucidity? Um, but I think you, we sort of covered that. <laughs> Anyone else had had, have you had any experience with ETs? Am I? Maybe if not anyone else has something to say, um, I had both kinds. I had the direct kind and I had the extra physical experience. So when I was 14, 15, I was in, still living with my parents. Um, we have a two story house on the countryside in a village in a rural area in Austria. So only fields and farmers. One day, I mean, to, as a background, my mom was always interested in extraterrestrials and UFOs and ancient Egypt and, and this kind of, kind of thing. So I was always open to the possibility. I never believed it, but I was open to it. <clears throat> so one day I was going up to the second floor to search for something. I cannot remember anymore. I was entering the room. I was looking in shelves. And suddenly I had this thought in my head, this like a telepathic command, go and look outside the window now there was no one my parents were down and, and i just followed it was such a strong command i followed and i went to the window and looked out and it was already dark in the evening and i saw a formation of seven to eight lights in formation on the sky and i stared at it i was mesmerized i didn't know what was happening was it balloon festival <laughs> what was going on and they suddenly they started moving, but in formation, like fighter jets, you know, in, in perfect synchronization with each other, but in a speed that is not possible with human technology until now. And they moved, they, they constantly interchanged, but it was always on a formation, but a different one. And in that moment, I thought I have to, to uh, call my parents because everyone will think I'm crazy. No one will believe me. So I was shouting at the top of my lungs downstairs, like, go to the window, look outside, look at this. And and my mom and my grandma, they, they went there to the window downstairs to look. And in that instant, when the others came to look, they started burning out one after the other, very slowly disappearing on the sky. But my mom still saw like the last one or two disappearing. So she saw at least something. But this the, the feeling this caused in me back then when I was still not sure are there ghosts are there other dimensions you know with 14 15 I was just like maybe you know but after that experience I was a little bit afraid in the first moment I mean <laughs> but on the other hand it was such a profound experience like there is something else and it's here and it's in contact in a way um 
that was that experience it somehow really opened my mind to really like to look for other possibilities than materialistic reality and then i had well when i was in FOSS last year um i, I came to FOSS. i was amazed by the campus you know and after i arrived the first evening i went already in the first dynamic you know and the epicon of, at the end says oh you have a huge company of extraterrestrials with you and i'm like oh really i don't know and he said yeah yeah the whole field changed it just changed and and the whole assistance changed when the team changed in a dynamic and 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 whatnot i'm like okay thank you interesting i made a note and i moved on so next day next dynamic different epicon different institution different topic oh yo you have so many extraterrestrials with you and i'm like already like i don't see them i don't perceive them it's super nice to have like a entourage with me you know <laughs> but i don't have that perception so it went on i went to eight dynamics and in every dynamic i got told there were extraterrestrials with me working with the mental soma specifically with the frontal chakra and so on and so forth and at some point after two weeks of being in the campus i was like that that's impossible i have so many energy sensations and i don't perceive i don't perceive a different holocene i don't feel them but what's wrong with me you know everyone can see them obviously but i can't so it was actually the Dependencia in the in the last dynamic i did there and jan was there as well uh we were energizing we had this dynamic that we we were doing like the We'll take arc and we were doing energizing and this kind of things and i was really concentrated and always a little nervous when i have to do the we'll take arc because you guys are used to it but in europe we don't do it so often <laughs> and suddenly i felt this huge consciousness beside me like energetically i didn't see it but i felt this huge presence beside me and it was at least at least two meters tall if not two and a half and if you suddenly feel this presence, you know, like I was focused, of course, on the person in front of me, but somehow my my like attention, you know, my psychosoma reached up a bit to see what's what's going on, and in a way I was like, oh, hello there, <laughs> and it was really good and interesting to see. Hey, it's not this is my confirmation because don't believe in anything, you know. And I think yes, I remember in the ecto lab when we had the power surgery, I was because I was a first timer, I had to lie down on the mattress. And at some point I I must have been somewhat out of body, but still over my soma. And suddenly I saw this typical gray alien, you know, this with the big head and with the big black eyes, you know, looking over me, you know, over the bed like a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> looking at me with a tilted head <laughs> and I didn't feel threatened or anything it was very I felt very safe you know and I was like close it was like a clairvoyance or something I'm like oh hey there nice to see you you know okay nice to get to know you but it's interesting because then you ask yourself why do you have this extra extra uh, terrestrial company with you and maybe if we think about what Valdo Vieira wrote in the Reubenizatus Europe Reorganization, extraterrestrials, Finland, obviously, but it was an interesting experience. And that's why I was very interested in the Holocene question as well, because how can I recognize them <laughs> as being extraterrestrial or, or or them being there helping, being in the in the dynamics and such? And the question is, are they only with me in the campus there? To come with me there or are they here with me in finland all the time you know any thoughts on that I think maybe they are connected to Melanie, regardless the the local that she is. Maybe they are there with uh, in Finland, because in my opinion, I think they might be connected to her olotocin 
to the things that she has to do. It's just an opinion, but it, mm. it's what I think. Yeah, and Th Thais is saying, I think people who are more universalist are more attractors of these consciousnesses. Is that you trying to say something? Okay, so I'll continue to read here. So they say, may, maybe we are recent ETs as well. Yeah, that's an interesting ta question as well, because I think when we speak, at least what I've heard when, when we talk about retrocognitions, we, we often speak about our human lives. Uh, I haven't heard that many people speak about their extra extraterrestrial period. That's quite interesting. I, I can't say that I have had any perception of, of an extraterrestrial period or when I was an ET. Yes, I was going to ask uh, uh, do you think it's possible that some of us are extraterrestrial consciousness uh, resumated, but we do not remember this condition? Maybe we were transmigrated to the Earth. What do you think you are? Um, what, what I think is uh, people who have a good parapsychic uh, perception, uh, they can see extraterrestrials. For example, I had in Frankfurt one guy, he, he saw uh, in many people extraterrestrials. And he was afraid of it because he had obviously some experience. So uh, he was talking about thousands he can see. Uh, um, so I think we have here in our experiments uh, a lot or some, uh, more than one or two uh, extraterrestrials. And uh, when I was in the uh, mini Tertulia and we talked about extraterrestriology, uh, Waldo was pointing people uh, who, who was participating in this group. And this was very funny. <laughs> because these were exactly the people who were interested on the research on it. So he was pointing, for example, Philippe uh, Bigelow, he was beside me or pointing me or others who were um, uh, making the research of it. I think this is uh, an effect that uh, we have because of this foreign syndrome. Uh, uh, we have the desire that we know our origin. We suffered all, a lot of it. And I think there are two types. There's the one who, who were one of these interplanetary helpers. And I think here in Cognopolis, we have uh, some. Uh, and the others can be uh, some who were participating of the uh, interacting uh, task. So when we think about the intermissive curse and the para visits we had with other planets, uh, who was participating on this, uh, of course, will have a desire to work in this holosocene, or he has an affinity on this holosocene, which when the first uh, um, interplanetary helpers starting their intraphysical activities create a holosocene which is very familiar to us or to you. So it's more the question, how do I uh, participate on this work? So I would like to um just I was thinking about what you were said about the level of the leaders in the world today, um, that they're a mirror of the particular evolutionary level of that country. Um, and that um, the level of intraphysical evolution is going to get worse before it gets better. And I'm just thinking it's it's interesting because you have some countries that had quite a good evolutionary level, but then all of a sudden, because of le a leader, they take 
you know, 100 years steps back. And I'm just thinking, why is that? Uh, why is that happening at this particular point in time? Because it's, it, I would, I would, it would make sense to me if it was already in a fairly bad level, right? And then you get a shitty leader. But if you're at a fairly good level and you get a shitty, shitty leader and the whole country takes like 10 steps back. Any thoughts there? Yeah. I think the group of the uh, research of reorganization uh, has searched on it. Is someone who, who wants to, to talk about this? How does it work with the leaders? Sorry, Jan, can you repeat that question? I'm not sure if I understood it. Uh, no, uh, I think this is a question uh, which is uh, connected to reorganization. Uh, and then we come to the, to the uh, integration of the people. So the question for me, uh, what is behind is uh, we have now a country and in this country we have a good evolutionary um, development. So on my opinion, it is that many of these people there, many of this consciousness, have uh, frequently intraphysically and extraphysically lives and an interacting of the group karmic problematic. Then the evolution goes much easier forward. Uh, this is what I think. So when you have then the baratrospheres, where are um, groups that the leaders, the mega intruders, do not have intraphysical phases so for a long while, let's say 600 years, they are doing something anti-cosmetic, but they are good leaders. And now the group is going smaller and smaller and smaller, and they all are in one re region or in one country. Then at the end, also the mega intruders will resume in a new intraphysical world. I think this is a, can be a, 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 a hypothesis, hypothesis that we can work with. So when the, the whole extra physically community was going to another level before um, also the leaders, which were more intraphysically work, uh, uh, extra physically working, going to an intraphysical um, uh, life. And then they came here. So I think this is an effect when we have more population here because of reorganization and this extra physical community goes smaller, then we will have these mega intruders coming back. And they have a thinking which is very from far away from everything. They, they are uh, in, in, in other uh, times living in their, in their mind because this is what they are practicing in the, in the extra physical society. So when they come here, for, for me, it could be that, for example, in, um, in some areas where the evolution is going well, uh, now some strong uh, personalities, leaders coming here with, with a low level. I think this is a question of reorganization. We have another question here from Thais. Have you studied idiosynchronous, idiosynchronous, sorry, idiosyncrasies in human being physiology and in relation to intraphysical adaptation of ETs? I you mean, think you mean idiosyncrasies. I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm. Is the question clear? Okay, idiosyncrasies. Okay, so if you have studied idiosyncrasies in human beings' physiology and their relation to intraphysical adaptations of the ET. No, I do not have uh, um, studied this. I, I just felt when, for example, I, I, I'm a visual uh, type of my, my parapsychic is uh, very often with images. And when I see someone interphysically here and he was uh, moving or something like that, sometimes I can see that uh, he has something which could be uh, a problem of the adaptation of the soma, but I do not study it. Did that answer your question, Thais?
Maybe we could expand that question also with, for example, predominance in certain chakras that we have nowadays mm -hmm. and also personality traits in a sense. Or if someone is like, for example, very technical in their approach, like an analytical problem solver, this kind of things mm -hmm. that maybe not always you see it in the in the physiology of the of the soma, but more because if you're thinking about paragenetics and if you're thinking about how the sarcosoma is formed, that even if we're already long adapted here in with this human body, but we still have these traces, or like it's part of the paragenetics, that if you had a huge head for hundreds of lives, or you have maybe like more active in the frontal chakra, you're more sensitive in the frontal chakra, that's, for example, what I'm now finding out that everyone who's doing voltaic arc with me says there is a force here in the frontal chakra that they never felt before. And their extraterrestrial people were working with mental soma when I was there in the dynamic that they switched. So maybe my connection is something with frontal chakra that was whatever is I have in extraterrestrial paragenetics is connected maybe with the frontal chakra. It's one of the indications and mental soma in some way, which also might be a reason why I have, I feel so many restrictions in a psychosoma because usually my mental soma overrides the, <laughs> the problems. And so I now have to take care, for example, to basically uh, accept the psychosoma as being in existence, you know, not to always rationalize everything. So I think we can see personally, if we were extraterrestrials, I think we can see these traces in self-research also. And especially in the dynamics or a complementarium, you know, these kind of experiences. But I have seen, I also like Jan said, sometimes I see people on the street and they have something to them that is not human. And it's hard to say what it is. And of course you can see I'm not sure who said it, Valdo, or that if people have these modifications, you know, like a lot of tattoos in the face, like completely covered, 100 piercings on the body, certain modifications to implants here that deform the head, you know, these kind of things. Here in Finland, you see a lot of that. You see a lot of that. Um, where you can see, okay, this this consciousness is striving to look differently somehow. Of course, it's pathological in that case if it goes so far. But but it's interesting to 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 observe. And of course, if you would, if I would be lucid enough to also have my parasitism working in that moment, maybe I could do some more connections with that. Yeah, I think too. Uh, um, we have when when. When there are some extraterrestrials coming here in the adaptation phase, it's uh, totally uh, um, difficult to overcome those problems just for the body. And I think when we are in the qualification phase, then we have more uh, possibilities for going to the strong traits we had before. When I was in the um, aerodynamic and in the uh, parasurgery dynamic, with this alien, I had the possibility of a very strong coupling, and I felt very tall in this uh, uh, minute, and it was for me wonderful because uh, my my para brain was adapted to this para brain of this very huge brain. It was so wow! It's going wide, and I can feel that the synapses working very easy. So it. The, the, this uh, alien can um, just to have this process of thinking much easier. Huh? He was thinking one minute, one second on, in, in, in one language, then in another, and other ideas combine this and have new ideas without any um, resistance. It was so wonderful. And when um, I was disconnecting to this um, uh, species, and I felt my brain and my power brain, I, I suffered physically. It, it, it uh, gives me headaches uh, 
that this brain is so small and for one idea you need to think crazy think with with activity it doesn't work by itself but the, the synapses was not flexible anymore so um what i want to say is um it's very good to have an inter exchange with uh, extraterrestrial beings uh, if you are one or not it's it doesn't uh, it's not so important for me important is to have uh, um, an idea to see how can this people work how can this people uh, perceive for example uh, um, and what happens after that uh, uh, coupling is that my vision sometimes changed um, i had one um, uh, mega authorization uh, with Waldo here in, in Foz de Iguazu. I was not directly uh, the one who has the energy on the site. This uh, moment, I felt that my perception was not more inside my brain and even not inside my para brain. It was falling inside myself and I, I can feel and I can see a huge space with some lights like dots and I felt that it was energies. And I asked uh, Waldo, what could it be? And he said that uh, this has something to do with cosmic vision, maybe. And I had this effect now in the last two weeks, uh, two or three times, three times. It was very interesting. Uh, once it was when I was, uh, was in, uh, in a, a treatment of acupuncture, and Susanna is making, uh, stimulating some uh, points for parapsychism. And then I felt that uh, I had this vision again. And I did not feel nothing of, uh, of my uh, stoma or psychosoma at all. And I uh, can see inside myself a space which, is, which was more or less like four-dimensional. I think this is also something which has connection with another perception of the reality uh, we all had before we came here to Earth. So I think another point is cosmic vision, which is an interesting item to research. That's a very interesting item to research. Um, and the, unfortunately, we are sort of running out of time. So we have about 10 more minutes left. Well, what do you say? Should we work a little bit with our energies? Everyone ready? Okay, great. Thank you so much, Jörn. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for participating in, in this um, presentation and the debate. Um, I do hope that we get more occasions of, to discuss this. But for now, I would like to ask you to just sit back comfortably. If you can, you can lower the lights. If you want to lie down, please do that as well. Just sit as comfortable as you can. Take a couple of deep breaths to just sink into your chair or your bed. Focus on your energosoma. Now gather your energies as much as you can at the top of your head. Bring everything you can up to the top of your head. Once you have a good amount of energies at the top of your head, start moving them down through your body. Scan your chakras, bring your energy down to the bottom of your feet. When your energies reach your feet, feel them there and then bring them back up to the top of your head. And then reverse the motion and bring them back down again. So you create a closed circus, circuit of energies. So keep moving your energies up and down.
keep your focus and your decision to move your energies up and down. If you can increase the amount of energies that you move from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. If you can, give a mental command to start speeding up the energies so the movement from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet speeds up gradually. Try to increase the speed and try to reach the vibrational state. Keep focus on your energies and on the movement. Stay focused. Now, gradually, you can start to decrease the speed until you come to a stop with the movement. And now let's start to send energies out. Let's exteriorize energies from an energetic body out and fill the room where you are. Send as much energy as you can in every direction. Send out your best energies and try to permeate the room where you are. If you can go beyond, go to your whole apartment. Try to fill your city with good energies. Keep exteriorizing as much as you can. You can exteriorize impulses or a constant flow or waves you choose. Now gradually Let's decrease the exteriorization until it stops. And let's start to tr absorb energies. So we bring energies into our energetic body from the field that we have created here. So start absorbing energies into your energosoma. You choose how you want to do that. If you want to do it in waves or impulses, 
but fill your energosoma with the energies. Keep your focus on your absorption. Absorb as much as you can. Now gradually decrease the absorption and start connecting to your soma again. Slowly move fingers, toes, eyes, and reconnect. Is everyone okay? All good? Great. Let's see if we have. Size is good too. Excellent. Good to hear. So, I think we have come to the end of this session. Um, Paulo, is there anything you want to say before we leave? Yes, everything. I just would like to comment about the BME, and I felt a very strong field of energy. Uh, especially during the exteriorization of energy, uh, where I felt uh, a very strong discoincidence of my vehicles. And I also felt my frontal chakra pulsating uh, very strong. And I, I, I had kind of a, a mental somatic ex expansion. And it was very good. Thank you. And uh, I'm not sure if he, Anyone else would like to, to share the, the experience about the BME or anything else? Okay, um, uh, we just would like to, to thank you all guys for coming, for participating today. Uh, special thanks to Jorn for the very interesting presentation and also to Evelyn for the great moderation. And our next debrief will be on 25th of June, um, paste it in our chat. And I think that's it. Thank you, guys, and see you there. Uh, what you Sorry, guys, guys just Thank one you. last comment. Guys, don't leave, please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you saw it, but I sent you an email today regarding the first recording of the first the bridge meeting if you still can remember what that was <laughs> last year in august <laughs> i'm so sorry guys it took so long but everyone was super busy and i needed to find software for the video editing and so forth but it is done it's online it's on youtube i sent you the link um uh, it should be fine the video but please guys if you want have a look if you see in the video anything that you would not like to be published, if you were sharing experience, you think, okay, I'm not sure if this should be public on YouTube, you know, then please just give us short feedback on which part you don't like there or which is too intimate maybe, um, and we can cut it out. So for now, the YouTube video is unlisted. So you get the, you got the link, but only those with a link can access the video. Um, I set a deadline for one week. So if I don't hear from anyone in one week on Sunday, I will make it public, the video also for people who could not participate. So and that we will do this with all the other videos and recordings that will be published. 
So just for you to know, guys, if you have time, have a look. It's really interesting to see the first bridge meeting again. It's, mm. it's very nice. And yeah, thank you so much. During the energy exercise, I felt connected with the Serenissimos. It was very nice. Thank you, Evelyn. <laughs> and no thank worries. You, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. You. It was really good seeing you again. Yes. Thank you, Evelyn and you. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was very good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Nice Sunday. You too.